Hey guys, what's going on today? I mean, Fly Guys here with another tutorial. Um, today I'm gonna tie what I like to call the Michael Jordan bait fish. Um, the color scheme is really, really cool, and I just really, really like it. So, um, good for pike, good for stripers in the summertime, like late summer in July. Red seems to trigger them. I don't know why that that's around the southern coast of Maine, but that's what I found. So here's here's the fly. So I'm just starting off here, um, just using these Mustad one aught tarpon hooks. Um, they're great. I love them. Um, so I got two feathers here. What I've done is made the sort of shiny side face out. So it's facing out on both sides and I've just stripped it here a little bit. Um, I start right at the point of the hook and just tie them in right on top. So they'll sit on top of the hook like that and make sure they are sitting nicely. So they should be sitting um, longitudinally sort of up and down rather than flat like that. So that looks pretty good. So I move forward to just past the hook really and I don't clip the ends yet. All right, don't clip the ends. So then here I've got some some saddle hackle here um, from MFC and this red dyed stuff that they use is not, it, it kind of messes the feathers up to be honest, but it's super cool looking as you can see here. Um, so what I do is I just kind of go through the bunch and pick out two that I sort of like that kind of match what I want. You want them to be thinner than your back gray feathers that I'm using here. Um, you want them to be thinner. So here I've got two feathers that are slimmer. Um, again, you're going to want them to be up and down, not flat. And you want them to ride right even with this. So they should go into that feather. Um, I don't... I don't pull off all the fuzzy stuff. I keep some of it on there. It just adds to the body. So what I do is I line them up, make sure they're the same length, which these are about the same length. And I'll find a spot where I sort of like it. It tapers down. So I'll just pull some of the fuzzies off like so. Boom. So there we go. And then I move forward, <clears throat> move forward, and I tie them in. Uh, just like you know an eye length forward and all it's doing is just moving the body further so again you want these to be tied on the side of the hook now um, there's no room on top to keep them flat so if you tie it in on the side what you'll have is something like this where let me get that so you guys can see it so you get something like this, where the feather kind of goes into the gray and just sort of slides along it. Um, it looks pretty cool. Um, looks pretty cool. So just go back, secure that down. Once you like that, like that looks pretty good to me. I'll come in with some blunt scissors and I'll clip tags off also if you a quick tip I have many different scissors these are used for hair and small fibers they're very sharp these are used for rough items like wire the ends the the stems of feathers if you don't have multiple scissors for your different materials I highly advise getting it because you don't want to dull out a really nice pair of scissors by cutting your thick stems and, and wire and stuff. So, uh, Dr. Slicks is, is my go-to. They have great tools, but a little plug there for Dr. Slicks, I guess. Um, okay, so now I have a little bit of space that I want to cover up, and all I'm using is some red tinsel. And what I do is I just grab sort of a few strands and tie it in. And make sort of a shiny red body. So I just grab a few strands of this red tinsel and just sort of lock it in. 
working back to the feathers and I'll just trim the tags here so come on there we go so I'll trim the tags and then I'll just sort of work my way up and pinch it off where I want it to stop so I take this and just just wrap it around it just gives it a shiny body I don't worry too much about what it looks like it's just a little extra flash um, I'll sort of go back and forth a few times so it will want to slip when it hits the edge because there's a taper down and this tinsel is rather slippery don't worry about it just make sure that it's tight we're going back a little bit anyways okay boom good enough so right now if you have any sort of white like there's a little white tag white sort of thread I'll just hit it with a red sharpie just to cover up any sort of blemishes you're not really gonna see this anyways when the fly is done so it's not a huge deal but you know if you're particular like me so next step is we're gonna add some bucktail in I want the top to flare up I want it to sort of rise up over this feather so I'm gonna pick more from the bottom of my bucktail to allow it to flare up um, there's gonna be two halves there's gonna be a top half and there's gonna be a bottom half so make sure oops that didn't go well so make sure there we go that you're holding it very very tight so here I don't want it to go all the way back to the end of my feathers I just kinda of want it to go past um, the frillies the sort of fuzzy feathers I just kinda of want it to go past to there so here I have my clump of bucktail that I'm gonna keep on top so I measure it out that looks pretty good right there and all I want to do is cinch it I don't want it to spin just want to cinch it alright so there we go it kinda of flares up you see it flaring up over the fuzzies that's good then we're gonna tie in also a clump below and that was not good. And this clump, about the same, so I want it to be about the same, um, but I don't want it to flare up as much. I want it to sort of create that belly taper, so I spin it and measure it out, make sure it's the same length as the top fibers, and I grab it in my left hand, keeping tension, and I just pinch it down. And so you can hold it. Make sure you're holding it. Because if you don't, it'll roll. So once you've got that locked in, I just grab both and just do a nice secure wrap there. So that looks pretty good for right now. We have a nice V-shape. Very, very bait fishy looking pattern right now. Um, <clears throat> next step is to come in and just trim your tags. When you're trimming your tags, really take your time to get as close as possible to your thread. It will just make your head look a lot neater. Fish won't care, but you might. And if you do care, like me, about clean heads, then you'll take your time on this step. And this is also where a good, pe a good uh, pair of scissors can come in. So, lots of benefits here from the good scissors. Okay, so, that looks pretty good there. So now what we're gonna do is move forward and just cover up those tag ends. And if you did it right, it should be pretty easy, like so. So here's what we got so far. A nice little head, plenty of room, don't want to crowd the eye. Make sure you do not crowd the eye. Um, that is really frustrating. So we should have almost a, 
sort of a sparser amount in the middle where the shiny body is so you can kind of see there's a nice little spot there for you to put uh, some sort of lateral line looking thing and I have this red and silver tinsel it goes great with these colors I don't want to overdo it so I only put two strands I put one strand with the uh, one strand with the silver and one strand with the red and I just tie it in I go about halfway back I don't go all the way back maybe three quarters of the way back um, nothing nothing too too crazy and make sure they're nice and straight that is the most important part that they're straight now I usually will flip the tinsel over and then tie it straight but because I want it to be really exactly in the middle of the body I don't do that just because it, it kind of angles not how I like it so I do it this way and it just makes for a oops, just makes for a better looking fly if I could catch it yeah. and take your time because as I am doing right now is struggling to get them lined up there we go take your time because this is a nice feature it looks really cool and uh, it really adds a defined sort of shape. So see, you see it there. It looks nice, and it kind of flows with the fish and uh, with the with the fly. So, all right. So I'm just going to work down and build up a little bit so my thread doesn't slip. And then finally, we are going to add. I, I call it a mask, but I, I don't. It's definitely not what other people call it. But I call it a mask above the deer hair. I have. <coughs> Excuse me, I have some iced up red here, and what I'm going to do is just sort of lay it on top very sparsely. So make sure your fibers are straight. So what I do is I just take it and lay it right on top, cinch it down, and I want it to sort of cup the top. I don't want it to just be in one place, I want it to cup the top. So I kind of roll it around just to make it sort of even on the top give it a couple cinches and then instead of doing it again on the bottom I just take the excess on the front and pull it pull it underneath and then trap that down so what you get is this sort of full body kind of uh, cup of this nice little red shimmer and it looks very very fishy so this is great this is looking good so far so I'm pretty happy with it I'm not gonna clean up this red up front I don't really care about it um, all I'm gonna do is whip finish right now I'm gonna color my thread red yeah you like that and we're gonna whip finish out front just give it a red tip red nose and boom we're done that part pretty sweet so to add to it I am going to use eyes uh, just to complete the head this will be our last part and here I have what are called tab eyes if I could get one out I have tab eyes here and they are super cool I love it. I love them the color. Boom. So what I'm going to do is I am going to keep the tab on but not use it for what it really is intended for. But I'm going to have it like that with the tab facing backwards. It's just kind of like a shiny cheek almost. You yeah, know, nothing just like a like a regular bait fish would have sort of a shiny cheek and this bait fish is going to be um, flattened it's gonna be squished basically uh, I don't if you wanted it to stay sort of puffed out you could flip the tab eyes around and just tie them in um, because some people like that extra volume 
I don't really want it for this pattern, but some people do. So all I do, oops, these are kind of sticky, and you know what, just so I don't mess it up. These are kind of sticky, but these aren't really doing the work like I want them to. So I'm gonna put a drop of glue down just a little bit to hold those eyes in place um, while we get ready to add our UV. So I'm gonna drop it in place. And that looks pretty good. Make sure those cheeks are lined up. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. You want everything to flow, you know? You want the cheeks to flow, you want the lateral line to flow, you want the tails to flow. So the more you can get things sort of lined up, the better. Also, make sure your eyes are are the are lined up both on top, on the front, on the bottom because if they're not then you will just have a silly looking fly alright after fighting with the eyes I have them in the right place and as you can see they look pretty good don't worry about the spacing yet when we add our uh, UV glue in, then we will worry about the spacing. But for placement, just make sure that the front, top, bottoms are all aligned. So here, as you can see, it looks pretty good. So today I am using uh, Solarez UV Thick just to fill the gap in between the front, uh, in between the top and the bottom. So all I do is put a good liberal amount in there. Um, I just put a good liberal liberal amount in the top and in the bottom just to fill those gaps and I don't worry too much about how it looks right now so I'm just gonna spin it around get it sort of evened out and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit it, zap it with the light. Give it a good zap. Oh. And after I use the thick, I say, I come in and I look at it and I say, okay, is it decent or does the head need reshaping? And this one actually came out super perfect. Um, there's, it's, yeah, it's actually really, really perfect. So that if there are imperfections in your head that you would like to fix, you can add, I use thin, so it's just with with an applicator, it's a little more, it's like out front here, there might be some pockets, so like right there, there's a little pocket, and uh, I just put some thin in there, and that thin enables you to, uh, put sort of a less heavy coat on but yeah this one came out came out very very good you should always spin it if you want it to be even if you're trying to build a lump or something like that don't spin it but if you want sort of a uniform uh, uniform shape so here I kind of want a circular shape spinning it really helps to flatten out any uneven surfaces um, my vice is okay at spinning. There are better ones where you can just sort of flick them and they spin forever, but I don't have that. Maybe next Christmas I'll invest in one of those. A gift for myself. So once you've done this, um, you're all done. And here's your fly. Uh, an excellent, excellent looking fly. I call it the Michael Jordan because obviously it's the same colors as the Michael Jordan brand. Um, it's a very cool looking fly. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments about how to fish it, where to fish it, when to fish it, uh, feel free to write it down in the comments below. 
Uh, check us out on Instagram, at MainFlyGuys. Uh, we get a bunch of good content going up on there every day. So check it out and let us know what you think. Thanks, guys. <laughs>